did. Uh, well, I'm really excited. I know when I say we, I'm talking about right now myself and then my our producer, Rich Jesse and Jeff Burson and Matt Gabinski, the whole team that surrounds Take Two. We're excited because Kathy Sinnott is going to be joining us in just a, mo- a moment. She's from Catholic um, Celtic Connections on EWTN. And Kathy is just the perfect expert on really letting us go deeper into Ireland and uh, the, the, the state of um, the Catholic faith in Ireland. And I know it's a hundred year anniversary and we're going to talk about that as well. So there's so many things to talk about, but it is St. Patrick's Day and we want to hear from you. So you may have a special understanding of St. Patrick's Day. You may have a, a special kinship towards it. And we want to hear from you. So the number to dial is 1-800-585-9396. 585-9396. Okay, we, and phone lines on this show do fill up very quickly. And that's great because, see, you drive the show. When Jerry's on with me and we're together, we just are kind of passengers. We sit and we let you take the conversation wherever you want to take it. Well, not wherever, but almost wherever. And we watch it develop. And hopefully what happens is we come out of the show just a little bit better, a little bit closer to God, a little bit changed forever. And that really, really does make a difference. Because those little, those little things that we plant in each other to help us grow in holiness, you know, that's, that's the name of the game that, that we are all uh, designed to be on this earth. We're designed to really be in relationship and to get um, ourselves to heaven and to get others to heaven as well. So we hope Take Two does accomplish that. We think it does because we have a lot of listeners. We have a lot of callers, a lot of first-time callers, a lot of young college-age callers. And that's, we've even had some, um, you know, 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds call in, and that is just a special treat. So if you're prompted by the Spirit, it is St. Patrick's Day. It is a festive day. Um, I've, I've turned on the TV set and I've seen parades where, you know, the rivers are dyed green and restaurants have green everywhere. And even on, I think all the, the taps, the beer taps are dyed green. And I don't drink beer, but, um, uh, you know, there's green everywhere. And I actually have a green sweater on, so I am participating. So we want to hear from you. one 800 Five eight five nine three nine six. Okay, so I want to do a little housekeeping before we take our first break because Kathy is getting ready. Um, she's in Ireland, and we're um, talking to Kathy to make sure she can get all hooked up and and be on the show with us today. And before we do that, I got a little bit of housekeeping. Okay, we're, I'm super excited because you are sharing on Facebook, EWTN Catholic Radio Facebook, and. Um, we're excited about that because I believe we're o- over 5,100 likes, and that's awesome. But, you know, like I shared early on, um, I really, it's important for us to get to that 5,000 mark, which you did. Thank you very much. And it's important for us to get to the 10,000 mark, which is what we're all shooting for right now, because the more... Um, Facebook followers we have, the more when we post stuff, we can get the word out and then other people can share it. And then the, the show and all of the, the information that comes out of the shows, the short takes and everything can get shared, you know, really worldwide. And that helps to grow the community, the take two community. So please consider going to EWTN Catholic Radio Facebook page and um, like it and then share some of the posts. That would really help. And then one other thing I have, and then we can go to break um, real quickly, um, is that I wanted to just share that we do short takes on this show. Keep in mind that our short takes are um, a little snippet of the show that we all vote on as a team. So Rich and Jeff and Matt and Jerry and myself, we vote on it. And then we um, pick the one that, you know, gets picked, gets posted on Facebook and also on our website, take2show.com. And it's just a snippet of the show. And I know that so many of you check back to see if you were the one that was picked. And some of you have been very, very excited. I, I keep referring back to Cherie in Mississippi. You were, you were very excited to have yours picked and you shared it with your Facebook friends. And that's what we wanted it to do. We wanted the conversation to keep going. So that's awesome. Okay. And I, I, okay. I fibbed a little. I have one more thing. Um, real quickly, uh, 
also, too, I wanted to just share that I did post the article that I referenced yesterday on yesterday's show about the Latin Mass. I did post the article from the National Catholic Register, and it's on Take2Show.com. It did go up a tiny bit late because I was I was kind of waffling between two different articles. I was going to post both, but then I just posted the one um, by Monsignor Pope. So I just wanted to make sure that you got that, and it's on Take2Show.com. Okay, I think we can go to our first break, and phone lines are filling up. This is exciting. So if you want to jump in on St. Patrick's Day, maybe weigh in on, you know, what, what, how you feel about the day. Maybe it's become too commercial. Maybe it's, you know, maybe we need to get back to the roots, and that's what we're going to do. 1-800-585-9396. This is Take Two with Jerry and Debbie, only Jerry's off on a pledge drive helping to raise money. So pray for the success of that pledge drive. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Doug Keck, host of EW10's Bookmark. I wanted to mention a new book that I wanted you to check out in time for the Jubilee of Mercy. It's A Holy Year in Rome, The Complete Pilgrim's Guide for the Jubilee of Mercy by our one and only Rome correspondent, Joan Lewis of Jones, Rome. And in this book, Joan takes you back in time for a look at the history of Jubilees and then brings you up to the present with a visit to the seven pilgrim basilicas of Rome, four of which must be visited by pilgrims to obtain a holy year indulgence. You'll discover the treasures of Rome and the Vatican, and you'll learn all about the many interesting facts, such as the difference between a church, a basilica, the significance of the holy doors, architecture, liturgical customs, and much, much more, as only Joan can bring them to life. Available through the EW10 Religious Catalog, EW10RC.com. It's a holy year in Rome, the complete pilgrim's guide to the Jubilee of Mercy by the one and only Joan Lewis. Check it out. This is Patrick Coffin. Join me for Catholic Answers Live. It's two hours dedicated to Catholic apologetics and evangelization. Designed for Catholics and non-Catholics alike, it's your opportunity to hear from and talk with some of the leading apologists and theologians in the church today. You've got questions? Questions, questions, questions. We've got Catholic Answers. Answers, answers. Catholic Answers Live, weekdays, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Thanks for joining us on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Okay, Donna in Buffalo, hold on, and the others, please hold on. I want to just um, uh, first go to, I shared with you that we're going to have Kathy Synod on from Celtic Connections, and we're just trying to make sure that we can get her, um, get her, uh, phoned in properly so we can hear from her. But until we get Kathy, um, we've got the next best thing to Kathy, Paul, who is Kathy, uh, Kathy's producer on Celtic Connections. And Paul is with us to kind of get us started, and then we can kind of jump in and then have Kathy join us. But Paul, um, uh, welcome to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. It's only Debbie today. But Paul, I, I don't, I, I'm going to try to pronounce your last name, but go ahead. Why don't you pronounce your last name, Paul? Paul Macquarie, Debbie. How are you? Macquarie. I'm well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. So you're the producer of Celtic Connections with Kathy, and we're so glad you were able to join us for the show. And you know, we're, you you heard at the intro I was sharing about, you know, it is St. Patrick's Day. Everything around us is green. I'm even using a green pen right now in addition to everything else. Um, so share with us, because you, are you, uh, where, where, are you living? Are you in Ireland? Or are you well, here right in the... Now, right now, I'm in Belfast. And oh. I'm about uh, less than half an hour from Down Patrick, which is really the center of all things St. Patrick. And Patrick, by tradition, we, is buried in Down Patrick. So he's just up the road. So there's parades up there all day. And the, 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 the shrine of St. Patrick is up there. And mm-hmm. uh, if you drive past, it's all lit up in green. And then the, the cathedral there, the Anglican cathedral that would have been a, a Benedictine uh, community before the Reformation, is also lit up in green. And that's where Patrick, St. Columba, and St. Bridget are all buried in that one spot. So that's just up the road. And it's a beautiful day here in, in Belfast, which is most unusual. We're almost not used to seeing it. So, And everybody's off. And, and uh, so thanks be to God. 
So, and I, you know, it's funny, Paul, uh, just so everybody knows, uh, we're going to have Kathy Sinnott on from Celtic Connections. Paul is with us, um, her producer. And um, Paul, uh, it's interesting you, you mentioned St. Bridget because I was reading a lot about St. Patrick last night. And so St. Bridget really is, is, is a kind of like an equal kind of uh, devotion to the um, the saints, or or how how does it does does one have well, a, way a it, higher? The way it is really St. Patrick. Really, um, when he came to Ireland, there were there were maybe other uh, minor saints that would have come to Ireland at at different times before that, and uh, maybe with, with the same name. But there was one major St. Patrick who came here uh, around about the fifth century, and uh, Patrick really came to an Ireland that was a pagan Ireland, that was a Druid Ireland, with Druids and, and, and various feuding uh, quarters in Ireland. And Patrick, of course, uh, before that, was a slave in Ireland and would have been, uh, as a child, as a, as a boy, a slave in Ireland, who escaped and then had the dream, had a dream to come back to Ireland. The, the, the youth, he, he talked to the Irish youth, he saw them in the dream and they came back to or He said, youth, Irish youth, Patrick, come back to Ireland. And the whole place was converted really within the, a generation mm-hmm. without even any martyrs. It was quite remarkable. And Ireland really has been a Catholic country for 1,500 years. And uh, so that's really, the, Patrick is obviously our patron saint. And then we had Columba and Bridget, and so many wonderful saints through that, that period right up to the, uh, the, uh, the time of the, then of the, the, the communities coming to Ireland around the, the 11th, 12th century, the, the Dominicans, the Franciscans and such. So that's sort of the, the context of St. Patrick. Very cool, very cool. Well, uh, we have Paul Macquarie with us. He's the producer of Celtic Connections with uh, Kathy Sinnott. And um, so many of you are calling in, but I think um, we've had some calls like Donna and others. You wanted to call to wish a happy St. Patrick's Day. Please call back. You don't, you, you, we want to hear from you. This is a celebration day. It's a, a really exciting day. So please call back. Uh, we want to we wanna hear your take on St. Patrick's Day. 1-800-585-9396. Paul, this, this question came came in, is it a holy day of obligation over in Ireland? Very much so. Very much so uh, for Catholics in Ireland. It's their patron saint. So, um, you know, as far back as I can remember, we've always been, you know, people wear their shamrocks, obviously, as they as they go to Mass. And we always sing, Gloria, El Gloria St. Patrick, I won't inflict you by singing it for you, but you, maybe you know it. So, yeah, it's a very much a holy day of obligation in Ireland. That is wonderful. And so how, um, okay, so in the U.S., we, you know, there's green everywhere, just like you were saying, you, ha- you have certain areas lit up and, and you know, it, it, it celebrates that. Um, is there, have you noticed, like, from the, news, from the newscast, is there different types of celebrations? Are we celebrating it differently than you are? I mean, like, I want to celebrate it the real Ireland way. <laughs> well, that's right. And, and I think there, there are sort of two St. Patrick day, St. Patrick's Days. And among Catholics, we love our faith. We're obviously very proud of such a, a saint as St. Patrick. You know, one of the, really, one of the best-known saints in Christendom, St. Patrick, and for such a small island of maybe five million people. But then there's the commercial St. Patrick. Now, for example, like when I was uh, in another life, I was a musician, and uh, I played folk music. And uh, we played uh, in Taiwan about 20 years ago, in Taipei. And it was the first official St. Patrick's Day celebrations in the People's Republic of China, which is the, what they call the type Taiwan. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we were very privileged. But as we played there, of course, uh, the people came in from different, different parts of the world wearing green and black guys wearing green with, with shamrocks and, and uh, leprechaun hats, very much coming from America. <laughs> so they, they, they really knew nothing about St. Patrick. But it was more like a beer fest, right? Right, right. A leprechaun, leprechaun fest. So that's the other, the other St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day, and so that has been even imported to some degree into Ireland. And mm-hmm. so we even have the green beer, and we have, the, you know, they go to the shops and you can buy those all those shillelaghs and funny hats and everything else. But nearly that's a caricature that's been imported to Ireland. So okay. there's kind of two, two St. Patrick's Day. So there is a bit of a struggle. It's a little bit like Christmas, you know, mm-hmm. Santa Claus and, and uh, you know, happy holidays. We're trying to keep it more centered on our patron saint. 
on the right. gift of faith to the Irish. Yeah, see, that's beautiful. So you're really taking it back to the real, you know, pure sense of it, the real reverent sense of it. And that's, that's beautiful. See, we can all learn from that, Paul. We really can. That's, that's right. That's right. Very much so. And uh, we're rightly very proud of St. Patrick. It's quite extraordinary that, that, that St. Patrick would have had such an effect in Ireland over one generation that the whole country really was converted by St. Patrick. Mm -hmm. such a such a long time ago you know and so uh and because of that ireland really became obviously i would say per capita probably uh the most we had more missionaries per capita than maybe any other country in the world and brought the gospel all over the world not least north america you know so even even american catholicism i think would have a character of, of sort of Irish Catholicism, I think, running through it. Many of right. your priests would have Irish names and you're religious or people who've taught you, or so many with obviously with Irish descent in, mm-hmm. in the United States. So, uh, so, so there is a bond, a special bond, I think, between Ireland and America and St. Patrick's Day. And many of our political leaders now will be, uh, will be in the United States and in Washington. To, to visit uh, uh, the president and have various functions. Yeah. Right. Wow. Well, Paul, let me ask you this question. Um, is, is, so at the, at the bishop who was your bishop, St. Patrick, is, it, do, is he buried in a certain area? Do they have relics? I mean, how do you, how do you let others be able to, you know, pay their respects? Sure. Well, Patrick, as I say, we believe is buried in Down Patrick in Northern Ireland. Okay. And obviously the, the town near, and Down Patrick is near Saul, where Patrick, when he came back to Ireland to bring the gospel, would have landed in Ireland for the first time, and would have, would have, there's even a, a little, a little oratory there where Patrick would have said his first mass back as a priest coming back to Ireland. And so, um, so Patrick, we, we're not sure, it's so long ago, but as I understand that uh, Patrick, the remains of Patrick, Bridget, and Columba uh, were, if, if I'm not if I'm not wrong, were were all buried about the 12th century in Down Patrick, under this under there's a spot there right at the at the at the cathedral, where you can go and venerate those saints right at at uh, in Down Patrick. So and there are there are various relics of Patrick. The best the one that I know best is one that we believe is the jawbone of Saint Patrick. Right. And uh, we did a, a series actually right from that cathedral in, 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 in Down Patrick uh, uh, during the time of the Eucharistic Congress. And right on set, we had the relic of St. Patrick's jawbone. This, this jawbone that would have spoken the gospel to the Irish. So mm. it's, it's quite a relic. It's quite a relic. And wow. I must say as well, there's, there's, uh, that's the, the, obviously at the, now the Anglican Cathedral. But uh, St. Patrick's Church there is the official shrine of St. Patrick. Father John Murray, a friend of mine, there is the parish priest. Mm -hmm. So they have a little shrine. So if you're ever in Northern Ireland, great to go to Down Patrick and visit these holy places. They also have a wonderful um, uh, St. Patrick's Centre there that has all the history and everything else, like a museum, you know. Very cool, very cool. Well, we're speaking today with... um Catholic uh, Celtic Connections producer Paul Macquery, and he is in Ireland, and we're excited because we're getting this straight from Ireland about St. Patrick, and this is awesome, so we can really get back to the roots of this wonderful, wonderful celebration day, this reverent day, this holy day of obligation over in, in Ireland. How exciting is that? So we want to hear from you. So many of you are calling in and wishing happy St. Patrick's Day wishes to all of us here at EWTN. Thank you so much. We've got your wishes. Thank you. You are so, you're in our prayers. We love you. So thank you. But we want to hear from you. Maybe you can ask Paul a question. He's right in Belfast and he's right there. We're in the heart of it. So you may want to ask him a question. 1-800-585-9396. 1-800-585-9396. Okay, don't be shy, you guys. Call in because this is awesome. So Paul, I've got so many things to ask you, but I want to kind of, I want to kind of just shift gears just a little bit, just to try to get into, um, you know, really just try to feel like we're, we're with you in Ireland. And you said you're in Belfast, correct? 
That's right, yes. Okay, and where is that located? Is that in the northern part, or where is that located? Yes, it's in Northern Ireland. And so Northern Ireland, uh, as we say, the six counties, it's under the jurisdiction of, of Great Britain, okay. of the United Kingdom, rather. And, uh, and then the Republic of Ireland is a, is a separate country. Um, and so, that's, so I'm in Northern Ireland. But of course, particularly for, for, for Catholics in, in Ireland, uh, we are, are certain our, our identity, and many, many Protestants in Northern Ireland, our identity is very much Irish. And, uh, but for many people, it's, they're British as well, particularly if they're from a Protestant background, they would think themselves more as British. But as time goes on and the troubles, really, that we had, like the civil strife in Ireland, really, mm-hmm. we've had peace now in, in, in Ireland for the last 20, 20-odd 20 years. And people are less hung up on, I suppose, the labels, and people don't mind if you're British being called Irish. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would say still the Irish in Northern Ireland who would be Catholic wouldn't take well to be being called British. <laughs> right, right. Got you, got you. Okay, I just got a text message that just came in and said, could you please clarify with Paul that you, you mentioned a holy day of obligation? So I just want to clarify this. It's not a holy day of obligation here in the U.S., but so you guys are required to go to church today? Well, that would be my understanding, yeah. That, okay. That, uh, I would have had a red ear if I hadn't went to church today when I was a young <laughs> fellow, that's for sure. <laughs> How beautiful is that? That's beautiful. Okay, well, we're getting the calls um, coming in. So uh, when you call in, you're going to speak to Matt Gabinski, and you can, you're can you going to be on hold, so you can listen to the show live. You're not going to miss anything. And we're talking with um, Celtic Connections producer Paul Mackery. And Did I say that correctly, Paul? Paul Mackery, yes. Yeah, I did. Good. So now, Paul, that so your um, is it called an Irish brogue? Is that what it's called? Is that your accent? Is that what it's called? No, we don't have an accent. Everybody else does. But we, <laughs> we don't have an accent. <laughs> but I love it. I'm trying to. You, I, you, you're going to hear me start to sound like it by the end of the show, Paul. Just, just, just uh, be careful. <laughs> well, but you know, the yeah, accent in Ireland nearly changes every, every from town to town, every ten miles. Like down Patrick, they would have a, a nearly different accent from Belfast and Derry. And if you get away down to Cork, now they sound like this now down in Cork. <laughs> and uh, in in Donegal, now they talk like this here all the time, sort of thing, you know. But the Yanks all talk like this, you know. And, uh, you know, and anyway, I won't insult you by trying to imitate an American accent. But we That's have so okay. many accents here. Cool. Mine would be a northern, I suppose my, I'm told I have a soft Northern Ireland accent. A soft Northern Ireland accent. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's very, very soothing, very nice. So, Paul, let me ask you, so when you greet each other on St. Patrick's Day in Ireland, is there a certain phrase you say? Is there something that we say? Oh, wait, but hold on, Paul. You're going to keep everybody in suspense because you hear that music. We're going to take a quick break. This is the one break we can't move. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about St. Patrick's Day right from Ireland. Stay with us. GMA Songwriter of the Year, Matt Marr, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, and Father Larry Richards are coming to the Chaffetz Arena, St. Louis, April 23rd. One Faith Experience is a unique, dynamic, full-day conference and concert event that will leave you re-energized in your faith, lift your spirit, and empower you to help set the world on fire for Jesus Christ. One Faith Experience, Chaffetz Arena, St. Louis, April 23rd. Tickets for this life-changing event start at just $15 and are available online at onefaithexperience.com. 60 Seconds with Father Mitch Pacwa. There can be no doubt that the exercise of the priestly ministry, especially in the celebration of the sacraments, receives its saving effects from the action of Christ Himself who becomes present in the sacraments. This is a very important thing because all too often we have had liturgists and clergy who start to think that perhaps the liturgy is about us and we make a good experience by music that makes us just want to hug our neighbor or we have a good feeling about it. I'm not against hugging your neighbor. I'm not sure that Mass is the right place to do it. But that warm, fuzzy feeling is not what Mass is about. The essence of the sacraments is that Jesus Christ Himself is acting. He is present. The people you know and trust are on EWTN. 
Divine Intimacy Radio. What we're going to be doing in the coming weeks, in the coming months, I'm very excited to begin studying the writings of Teresa of Avila. We're going to be going through a book called 30 Days with Teresa of Avila. We're not, this isn't a book study show, so we're not going to be reading the text necessarily, you know, and line by line going through that. That'd be a little strange for radio. But what we will be doing is reflecting on the wisdom from her letters. Divine Intimacy Radio, Sunday, 6.30 a.m., 1.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. Thanks for being with us on this wonderful St. Patrick's Day on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Jerry is off on a pledge drive helping to raise money, so we miss him. Jerry, we miss you, but we're praying for you that it's a successful pledge drive in Seattle at Sacred Heart Radio. So we're happy about that. But today we are talking about St. Patrick's Day, and we were able to get... Uh, Paul Macquarie on the phone from Belfast, Ireland, and he is sharing with us really the authentic, the real, the real way St. Patrick's Day is celebrated and honored in Ireland. And this is exciting. Um, but before we get back to Paul, because I want to just ask Paul how we, we greet one another in Ireland on St. Patrick's Day. Before you answer that, Paul, I just wanted to say, because if you heard the spot, dear listeners, about the One Faith experience, tickets are selling super fast. And advanced pricing is going to end on April 4th. So if you if you heard that wonderful spot on the One Faith Experience, please go to onefaithexperience.com and um, purchase your tickets or make your plans to come into St. Louis. It's going to be an amazing experience, a life-changing experience. And the National Catholic Register just did a wonderful article with Jerry Usher on it. You'll get all the details of it, but don't hesitate. Go to onefaithexperience.com. Okay, Paul, so how do you greet one another in Ireland on St. Patrick's Day? Well, the one thing we don't do is we don't say top of the morning to you. (laughs) <laughs> I remember hearing that and thinking that's a very strange expression, and that's, it's not an Irish expression really at all. It's a, so in Northern Ireland, we just say Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And oh, my shame in Northern Ireland, we never learned the Gaelic, so you'll have to ask Kathy to give you the Gaelic greeting, but that's basically okay. it, yeah. Okay, okay, very cool. And and Paul, so you're the producer of Celtic Connections, and just to let our listeners know, it's on EWTN. It airs 8 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, 7 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday. And you must just get, do you, do you take calls, or is it is it just, uh, uh, are you kind of just uh, giving information to, to all of us here and, and sharing with what, what's transpiring with the Catholic faith, or how is Celtic Connections um, structured? Sure. Well, Celtic Connections, I'm in Belfast, Kathy's in Cork. So we have a little studio for Catholic, Kathy in Cork that I produce remotely. And really our brief is to look at issues in Britain and Ireland from a Catholic perspective. Mm. And also we have features and we, 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 we highlight various apostolates and ministries that are, that are going on in Ireland. Uh, and because we've really, up until recently, there has been no Catholic broadcast media in Britain or Ireland. Uh, and even now, there's, there's one uh, uh, Radio Maria that has started, you know, in a very small way. But we've only had secular uh, radio in Ireland, and then, and then one or two uh, just in latter years of, uh, as a Christian station or two in, in Ireland, and certainly some in Britain. So we haven't had uh, Catholic media here, broadcast media. So Celtic Connections will be the only, certainly the only show that I know of that looks at issues in Britain and Ireland through a Catholic lens, from a Catholic perspective. So that's Very what we nice. do. Very nice. So, so dear listeners, EWTN has Celtic Connections on, on 8 p- at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday and 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday. I bet you get a lot of tourists after Celtic Connections show airs. I bet a lot of people start booking and say, I'm going to go to Ireland. I just feel it. Okay, Paul, so stay, uh, stay with us because we have a question f- uh, for you from one of our listeners and he's calling in his name is Mike and he's he's listening to EWTN radio driving through Illinois and he has a question for you so Mike welcome to take two with Jerry and Debbie thank you Jer- Debbie and Jerry for taking my call uh, happy St. Patrick's Day and God bless you all my thank question you. You too, this, might be a stu- this might be a stupid question but how differently is the rosary prayed upon and done there as opposed to here in the States? Uh, Debbie, could you repeat the question? I couldn't quite hear it. 
the the question is how is and by the way mike it's not a it's not a a, a a bad question that's an excellent question that is a fabulous question i think we need to know that because the rosary is an important important prayer the question was paul how is the rosary when we pray the rosary here in the us if i if i understand you correctly mike is it different in ireland do you pray it differently do you have different style rosaries is there is there different forms that you pray differently from we us in the us um, I don't think there's any any particular difference from from the way that we pray the rosary and and you do in the U.S. Um, sometimes, like uh, we would, the person who's leading the rosary would announce the mystery, and I know in other places the person who's picking up the mystery would announce the mystery who's praying the the Our Father and Ten Hail Marys. So there's maybe little differences like this, and um, and we have the Hail Holy Queen and the the prayer to God the Father. So, um, and certainly it's interesting that uh, I was involved with Youth 2000 for some time. And I remember um, really in the 90s, uh, you wouldn't say the rosary without saying the St. Michael's Prayer and the prayer to the guardian angel at the end. So mm-hmm. that's been, that was probably the way my grandparents would have prayed it, the trimmings as they called it. And then that seemed to go away and it's come back again, particularly with young people. And, and I notice as well with the Rosary in Ireland that uh, when I was growing up, after Mass, people would pray the Rosary, but they would pray it in Ireland very typically rapidly. It was like going to a horse race. Hey, I'm very because I was people. It was like really <laughs> fast. But with young people, I noticed coming into Youth 2000, a tremendous reverence coming into the Rosary. That, uh, that was something that was, I think, the Holy Spirit brought to, to uh, that time of the people coming to a more catechized depth of faith that, of, of, that, of young people with, with Youth 2000 and the, the Eucharistic adoration coming back into Ireland and things like that. Tremendous reverence saying the rosary. That's Does that beautiful. answer your question, Mike? Oh, yes, sir. I just, to me, the, the rosary from our mother is very special. I carry mine 24 hours a day, and it just means a lot to me personally. You know, I was, I was just curious. I would love to go to Ireland someday. Michael, sure, well, you know, Mike, the, rosary, the rosary has been a very important prayer in Ireland for so many centuries, particularly through the time of uh, persecution in Ireland when we're with uh, the Irish martyrs. And I remember the story of, of Cromwell coming over and being very frustrated trying to, to get the Irish to stop the superstitious Catholic faith, as they would have said, on these Irish people with these infernal beads that they seem to take with them everywhere. So uh, the, the, the rosary has been an incredibly important prayer through the very dark days in Ireland. Well, and you know, I just wanted to share, Mike, uh, before we let you go, are you of Irish descent? And, and, and my second question is, is I, I just wanted to say your curiosity of wanting to know that I think is really wonderful. I thought that was an, an excellent question because, you know, like as Paul shared, how it, um, previously there would be, kind of be these uh, uh, this rapid fire saying of the rosary and now it's gotten to be more reverent that is beautiful so mike you really you know you really opened that up to us so i just wanted to hear mike are you of irish descent oh no ma'am no oh, but I you would like to, i would love to go there someday though but there in there, rome i would love those are the two places i would love to go before i pass very cool. Very cool. Well, Mike, thank you so much for calling in. Drive safely. I'm glad you, it sounded like you were on a headset and you had your seatbelt on, so that's good. So drive safely, Mike, and happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Um, well, this is so beautiful. See, see, Paul, we have such great... Um, Great calls coming in and questions. And, you know, something I wanted to kind of tail off of what Mike said real quickly is that um, what talking about the rosary and you said it became more reverent when you, you know, it, there's something that happens here in the U.S., and it's always disturbed me. I've been a youth minister for many, many years, and it's, it's kind of disturbed me where people wear the rosaries kind of like as jewelry. Would that ever happen over in Ireland? No, I haven't. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't happen here. You might get it sometimes with maybe maybe young people at a conference who've just heard about the rosary for the first time. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, but it's not. 
I think that people it would be discouraged from being a kind of fashion item. I think that I think the story was that uh, you know Bono out of U2, he went to visit uh, Pope John Paul II, I believe, and for a time after that, wore wore a rosary beads around his neck. Oh, really? Um, what what that meant to him, you know, I'm not sure. I don't think he's known for his Catholic orthodoxy. But mm-hmm. uh, so that might have started some sort of fashion or something. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Well, Paul, you know what? We have been so blessed. Thank you for stepping in and really, you know, getting us started off well on take two and, and kind of setting the stage because we did get Kathy. Kathy is on and we're excited um, that she's going to be with us. And Paul, I, I want to thank you uh, so very, very much. Um, it's It sounds like Celtic Connections. Well, I know because I've listened to it. Celtic Connections is amazing. It's doing great work and it's, it's sharing the faith in such a wonderful Wonderful international way. And so, Paul, great job at being the producer of, of Celtic Connections. And I just, I'm so blessed that you were with us today. And happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Well, thank you very much, Debbie. And a very happy and blessed St. Patrick's Day to you, to Jerry, and to all your listeners. And Celtic Connections this weekend, by the way, with a special guest for St. Patrick's Day of Sister Breeds McKenna. Uh, that you might, you might know Sister Breeds, the wonderful sister with uh, really who has a healing ministry uh, internationally, particularly the priests around the world. So Sister Bridge is our special guest mm-hmm. on this week's Celtic Connections. And we're delighted to just hi to all my friends at EWTN. Um, uh, Rick, Rick there uh, uh, mm-hmm. and to, to Brian Martin. And well, I better not start mentioning names because at least <laughs> and everybody be else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's such a grace and blessing to have EWTN here in Ireland. So thank you, and it's just wonderful to be part of the team. Oh well, we we love you as part of the family. That is awesome. But Paul, you can you can say hi to Kathy because she is on right now. Hello, Kathy. Hi. <laughs> Kathy, you know, we should tell them that, that uh, Kathy should have been talking instead of me, but I think your time went back in the United States. Did you change the, 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 the summertime, Debbie? Um, well, you see, I live in Arizona, and we are the lighthouse of the uh, United States. We never change. But yes, it All did right. go. It did. It we did this weekend. To speak to you for another hour. I know. <laughs> well, that's right. I, you know, the spring forward. But I think I think what's <laughs> happened, and uh, it's always it catches people, particularly when they're trying to catch flights, is that you in the states, I think, spring forward in the right. middle of March. And we don't spring forward to the end of March. So we were oh. expecting five hours, and you were only four so hours. So I got lost somewhere along the way. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Well, I'm, see, this is why Arizona never changes their clocks. We don't have to. We, yeah. yeah, see, there you go. But, Kathy, we have been so blessed the first half of the show with uh, Paul Macri, your, oh, your producer. Know. Oh, my yeah. goodness. You get, the, you get the pleasure to work with him all the time. You are so blessed. Well, I tell you, I certainly am. And, you know, there are times I say, well, Paul... You'd be much better at this than I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, so. he's, he's just wonderful, and he's also very humble, so I'm sure he's blushing now. Oh, he's, he's wonderful. I, I could listen to your accent all the time, Paul. It's amazing. <laughs> so if I, if I, God forbid I ever get, get sick or anything, you've got to just call me every once in a while in the hospital cause I, so I can hear your soothing accent. If you could do that, that would help. <laughs> well, bless you, Debbie. I hope you come and darken our door. If you're ever in Ireland, we'll have a cup of tea in the kettle on for yourself and Jerry if you're ever over. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Consider that. Yeah, we will put that on the books. We actually are, have been talking about Ireland. So you, you might see us. You might see us real soon. Thank you, Paul, so much. Okay, so Kathy, we are yes. not good. Okay, we are not going to take a break. So I need uh, what I would <laughs> like to do is I want to share you uh, just a little snippet of your bio just so that our listeners because I'm sure you have so many that listen to Celtic Connections, but so many uh, ha- maybe have not heard of all the great work. Now, Kathy, so if if you allow me, I want to just share with our listeners just a snippet it's if my that's turn okay. To blush. <laughs> okay, there you go. It's your turn to blush. Here we go. Now, let me just share, dear listeners, Kathy has a very amazing 
beautiful, just heartwarming bio. And if you could ever it, it, maybe um, look it, look into her her life's work and her and her vocation and her family and her extended family, it's amazing. But I'm going to give you just a little a snippet. Kathy Sinnott is a well-known disability rights campaigner and former independent member of the European Parliament from 2004 to 2009. She is founder of the Hope Project, co-founder of Newman College in Ireland, and author with articles published in The Times, The Independent, The Examiner, The Daily Mail, just to name a few. Kathy was awarded the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Mother's Award in 1999, named Woman of the Year in 2001, winner of the Peace and Justice Award in 2000, and Celebrity Mom of the Year in 2000. It's a special award voted on by the women of Ireland. Kathy is a born Catholic. She's a mother of nine, aging, the ages range from 15 to 37, and a grandmother of five. She's also the host, and we mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. She's also the host of EWTN's Celtic Connections, which airs 8 p.m. Eastern on Saturday and 7 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday. Kathy, welcome to Take Two. <laughs> I, I'm not sure who this person is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's yeah, and and not, but I think the thing I have to tell you, Kathy, all the awards you've won and all the all the articles you've published and everything you've written, it, it's amazing. But the one thing that really touched me about your your long form of your biography is the fact that you're such a dedicated mom to your oh. family and to your extended family, Kathy. Wow. Oh, well, God has really blessed me. I mean, He blessed me with nine children. And then with the, with the death of my sister, he blessed me with more, and with seven more. And, um, you know, now the grandchildren, and, you know, we have one grandniece now, and it's just to watch it all happen. I mean, all I can say is thank you, thank you, thank mm. you. <laughs> it's wow. just brilliant. Wow, you're amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, Kathy, before we get into just, and Paul did such a great job kind of laying, kind of laying the foundation for, for really the celebration, the, the, um, the, the reverence side of, of participating in St. Patrick's Day. But I really, we have uh, one of our listeners, Frank, in Indianapolis, Indiana, is listening so patiently. I would like to take his call and then maybe have you answer that, and then we can maybe talk a little bit for our listeners. Okay, Frank, you've been waiting so patiently. You're on the air. You're listening on EWTN Radio in Indianapolis on EWTN.com. Welcome to Take Two with our special guest, Kathy Sinnott. Hi, Kathy Sinnott. Uh, Hi, I thank you. <laughs> I was just wondering if uh, you ever heard of the Patricios in Mexico. Uh, did I? Did I ever hear of who? Have you ever heard of the Patricios? No, tell me, or, or maybe I'm just not hearing the word right. Uh, well, yeah, they, they say the you know, Patricios, but that's the uh, Spanish way of saying, you know, the Patrick. Um, oh. And uh, the reason I was asking because uh, um, when Texas was breaking away from Mexico, um, uh, once upon a time, they rumors had it that, uh, and I don't know if they say it's part of history or not, but they say that um, the Catholic Irish sided with the Mexican side, and obviously the uh, Protestant sided with the with the right. U.S. side, and and um, I can say for a fact that I know a lot of Mexicans, and I'm one of them. I have a beard, and um, I have a lot of red hair, and people tell me, um, you're just one. I've never seen a Mexican with, with red hair like that. And we have, also have a boxer, a famous one. They call him El Canelo. Yeah. And he's all red-headed. He's red hair too, and he's one of the top-ranked boxers right now out of Mexico. And he's, you know, um, really white skin and he's got red hair and and they yeah. that's why they call him El Canelo which uh, which means cinnamon. So it's uh, <laughs> Well you know uh, it's it is a very interesting line because the Irish did they did play a part in Mexico, even in the Cristeros. There was a an as far as I remember, an Irish brigade. And um there has been a lot of contact between Ireland and Mexico, but also even more so there's a, a line as well because there's um, 
a very definite genetic link between Spain and Ireland. Remember, Ireland was, for many centuries, an oak forest. And our biggest areas of settlement were around the coast. So if you go on the west coast of Kerry, Galway, there's a lot of Spanish names or Spanish-derived names, even names like De Valera. Uh, you know, it has sort of a, a Spanish connection. And I think people also, to be aware, that there's, there is a lot of, there's a definite red-headed thing among the Spanish that would have been brought to Mexico. And I'll give you two examples. Queen Isabella was a, a strawberry blonde. And Mother Mariana, you know, Our Lady of Good Success, Mother Mariana in Ecuador, was, I, I was reading a biography of hers from the 1700s, and she's described as a typical Spaniard, blonde red hair. <laughs> hmm. So w there is a connection between the Celts and, and the Spanish, you know, many of, and that was brought to the New World as well. So, you know, there may be a direct Irish connection with the red hair and, you know, certainly the faith and all of that, but also an indirect one via Spain. Wow. I myself am or was a redhead, so <laughs> I'm very fond of that, wherever I find it. Yeah, so you can relate. Well, thank you, Frank. That was that was great answer, Kathy. And uh, Frank, thank you for asking that question. And we wish you a happy St. Patrick's Day. And and Kathy, I have to just say, uh, we do have one other call. Uh, we actually have, sure. we have a couple calls, but we have another call that's addressing the issue that I mentioned early on before you came on to the show about the 100-year anniversary. So John, uh, sure. driving through Georgia, listening to EWTN Radio. John, ask your question to Kathy. Kathy, I love the show, Count the Connections, and oh, enjoy great. listening about it, and uh, I'll learn so much from you. Can you tell us a little bit about the uprising and what happened during it, and why is it 100 years of what's gone on with you guys? Well, the 100 years, the centenary of the Easter uprising is because on Easter Monday, uh, 100 years ago, so 1916, there was a rising of what were called the Irish Volunteers. And it was a, a band, uh, you know, mm, it, there's debates on how many there were, uh, but it was certainly a, a fairly sizable uh, force led by some fairly famous people, James Connolly, uh, Padraig Pierce, uh, Eamon de Valera, etc., who, who rose up in arms against the British. The British were garrisoned in Dublin and, and very much watching Ireland from Dublin, and there were smaller risings in some other towns, but the significant one was on the main street of Dublin. And uh, the actual date was April 24th, but it's always commemorated, if you like, on Easter Monday, because there was very much in the mind of those who rose up uh, this connection to Easter, to Good Friday, to Holy Saturday, to Easter and so uh, it's, it's commemorated on Easter Monday, not on April 24th. And, you know, we're going to have quite a few of centenaries over the next um, period because we're in a period called the Revolutionary Decade. So really from 1912 uh, to 1921, when the treaty was signed and Ireland got its independence and had its first constitution, the one we have now is 1932, but the Free State in 1921. So every, almost every year now, from now to 1921, there will be very significant uh, centenaries on the way to the 100th year of Irish independence. Great. Wow. So that's, yeah, you, you, you clarified that for us. That was great. John, I hope, hope that answered it. And we want to thank you so much. Be safe driving through Georgia. I hope you have your seatbelt on. And I know you must be wearing a headset when you called in. We always check, Kathy, to make sure everybody has their headsets on and their seatbelts on when they're calling in to, <laughs> when great, they're calling in to great. take two. So John, God well, bless you. I, just to okay. say to John, if he's anywhere near Dawsonville, um, stop in on the, uh, Stop in on the grotto at Christ the Redeemer Parish. 
that's got a real connection to Ireland. It's an Irish-style grotto there to Our Lady in the middle of the Bible Belt. So if you're there in Georgia, please stop in there, say a prayer for all of us here in Ireland, and um, uh, just, you know, I highly recommend it. It's a very special grace there in Georgia. Very cool. So, John, can you do that for us, maybe? I definitely will. Definitely will. Thank (laughs) you. Thank you. you. Thanks, John. God bless you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay, I'm so sorry. Viola and the others, we are so sorry. Kathy, I wish we had another hour uh, with you, and and we don't. So would you, I I always like to put our our guests on the spot. Would you come back again and visit us again on Take Two? Sure, sure. And we'll check. We'll make sure you don't change your time. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, like I told you, Arizona doesn't, so I'm cool. But, uh, you know, (laughs) you're Russia doesn't either, actually. Russia doesn't either, as far as I know. Really? Okay. Yeah, okay. They very cool. Don't do that. <laughs> well, 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 Kathy, um, Celtic Connections is on 8 p.m. Eastern on EWTN on Saturday and 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday on EWTN. And I know all your listeners and all now your new listeners from Take Two will be listening to Celtic Connections. But, Kathy, is there another way we can reach you or get to maybe hear some of your work? Well, I, at the moment, um, you know, there are little bits and pieces that, you know, I do with Paul, maybe on some of the television things. But mm-hmm. at the moment, not on American, the American stream okay. of EWTN, okay. but if you're on a computer on the English, uh, the European English stream of EWTN, we have a TV show called Three Wise Women. Yay. With, okay. Um, yeah, okay. with Dana. And the uh, and everyone on EWTN knows Dana, uh, yep. and Kathy and Wiley, the founder of the Catholic Grandparents Association. Amen, amen. Thank you, Kathy. God bless okay. you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. We'll see you all tomorrow, you dear too. listeners. God yes, bless. and have a beautiful and blessed day. See you tomorrow.